Um, so, so great to see you today. And uh, how, how have you been doing? How have you been holding up? It's just, it's a little weird, Bonnie. You know, I'm here in New York and, uh, you know, as, as you know, that was ground zero for the longest time. And we're just sort of uh, getting over our, our, our gun shy uh, yeah. lockdowns. Yeah. And actually, I'm going back to work. I'm going back to shoot. Uh, I start prep next week. So. Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, take a lesson from Tyler Perry because he seems to be getting it right. What do you mean? He has, you know, he has his whole complex in Atlanta, but he's had his people come and they're all COVID free and he's getting them tested and he keeps everybody on set and it's amazing. And he's been able to go back into production and knock wood, no, like 400 people. No one's gotten sick. Yeah. Do you know him? I don't know him personally, but I would, I mean, I've interviewed him many times, but uh, I just think it's pretty fantastic what he's doing. It is fantastic, but he's kind of a control freak, you know, and so, <laughs> I mean, I you know, it. you see the way they, they lock down uh, uh, um, the cities in, in China and et cetera, when this all began. Yeah. Uh, that was some, that was some forceful, you know, they had to be yeah. strong about that. That's why we're having problems. We can't get people to wear a mask. Yeah, I know. Uh, I but know. Tyler has his compound and, and everybody works for, for him and you're, you're there. Yeah. He's the boss. Oh. And uh, yeah, listen, yeah. If it, whatever works. So listen, whatever gets people sure. working again. Yeah. Amazing. Um, first off, I, I, I want to congratulate you on Percy. I, I, I thought you did such a phenomenal job directing this. And I remember, um, a number of years ago, following this story in real time. Mm. And I was just amazed at the whole thing and what the Schmeissers went through and, and uh, their story. Fantastic. Was it something back then that kind of caught your attention? How did this all come about for you? No, not at all. I mean, uh, a little, con uh, a little uh, context. Uh, my parents were, were activists and, and we were you know, always engaged in, in, in civil rights activism and, and anti-war, you name it. We yeah. weren't allowed to have uh, grape jelly or, or lettuce to a lot of my childhood to support uh, Cesar Chavez's initiatives, uh, initiative in, in, in California for the yeah. farm workers. So it, it's, been, it's in my DNA. Um, and, and both my parents are, are uh, first generation off farms. My mom's South Dakota, my dad, Maryland. But I, I, go, I went to Whole Foods to learn the difference between canola and, and corn oil. Interesting. So it's been an interesting learning curve. So I, I, the story came to me and I went, oh, I, I always like a new challenge, uh, you know, something different than the last thing I did, and here it was. Yeah, and, and what kind of challenge was it for you? Because uh, not only is this a fantastic story, uh, you know, but it's the little guy against the big guy. Uh, it, it, there's a lot going on here. And, and thank goodness for somebody like Percy who just stuck to his guns. You know, he sacrificed a lot uh, but boy, did he ever change history? Yeah, it, that that became evident as we um, we shot on a farm uh, north of Winnipeg. Lovely family farm, the Matheson family farm. Yeah. Six generations on that land, and the farm he went. Bill went to his desk drawer where we filmed uh, as as Percy as Chris Watkins' desk drawer, and he went in and he pulled out a canceled check that he'd written to Percy in the in the late 90s wow for 85 dollars that he contributed to to, to percy's uh, uh defense fund Amazing. so it, it really it really resonated in in all these farming communities as well so that that to me was what really was uh, satisfying in terms of telling the story i was going to say that's if anything that's at the heart of the film at the at the heart mm -hmm. of the story the people who who did support him and stood by him and his wife and his family i mean that's, that's taxing on a family, <laughs> you know, that he was yeah. up for having to possibly pay a million, over a million dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah, he had everything at stake. And, and there was some pushback too from other farmers and you know, he, he, uh, he really had to stick to his guns and he did. Yeah, how did you foresee uh, Chris Walken playing this role? <laughs> he was fantastic. <laughs> well, you know, it's typecasting. There's a guy from Queens playing Saskatchewan farmer. Who do you think of first? You'd think of Chris Walken. I would, for sure. Yeah. No, he, he, uh, his name kept coming up, and I went, wow, that's an interesting thing. And his agents were pushing for it. And I went, I've worked with him four times now. Yeah. yeah. In, in four different categories. I've worked with him doing special effects on the dead zone. Yeah. I worked with him as an actor twice. And then now this. So I, I, he, 
he's a private person. We're not buddy buddies. I got to fax him and I don't have a fax machine. Yeah. I to get a hold of him. But once we engaged in, in, in the idea of him playing this guy, it, it made perfect sense to me. And I understand that he actually learned how to drive that combine. He absolutely did, yes. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's not that hard to drive. You got to keep it straight. Yeah. You know? But uh, it was pretty impressive. So we just locked the cameras on, 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 the, on the rig and, all right, Chris, good luck. And off he went. Is it true that the two of you went to the genies together way back <laughs> when? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, that was on the dead zone when I, yeah. was, doing, uh, I was doing effects with, with Chris and I was putting bullet hits on him. I was lighting his bed on fire every day. I was the eighth guy on the eight man team. I was a schmengi of all right. effects guys. But I also got nominated for a genie that year. Yeah. As a best supporting actor. So I went to Chris in the shop and I said, Chris, um, I, I, I understand you're giving an award tonight and I'm up for one. You want to ride in together? And he went, sure. Why not? <laughs> and uh, so I got my rented tux and, and picked him up in the hotel in my pickup truck from work and we went to the award show together. He didn't remember that at all. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that was our. Uh, that was your connection. Gateway. Yeah. That was my gateway to engage him in this. In this this film so i i love it and also uh clark man like this whole cast is spectacular but thank you for bringing roberta maxwell back and i i know that she worked back in the day in stratford with chris walken which is exactly you know mind-blowing she yeah. is wonderful i mean what a what a treasure she is that we have well here. that was that was an interesting thing too because uh she did a series with my sister tabby yeah and my dear friend ingrid benninger up there and so I called her, and I didn't know her, and I called uh, my sister and Ingrid up, and I said, what do you think of so-and-so? And the reason why she came up in the zeitgeist anyway, because Chris Walken had worked with her at Stratford. So it was all coming to, it was all making perfect sense. Yeah, and then you look at the she rest of it. Well, she, she really gave such truth to it, you know. So. Oh, she was so, so fantastic, honestly. It was, I, I had a huge smile on my face pretty much for the whole time. Just watching her again, I hadn't seen her in so long. Uh, I just love her, she's such a treasure, honestly. Uh, and then, you know, Zach Braff. But Zach Braff, Luke Kirby, uh, Christina Ricci, I mean, uh, Peter Stabbing. Were you kind of pinching yourself, my friend? <laughs> well, I, I did a series, uh, Kirk, uh, Luke and I did a series together. Yeah. Um, up there in Toronto. And so I knew him from there. And uh, let's see, Zach, he, it, that just came, uh, we had, um, and Zach will tell you this story too, we had uh, Michael J. Fox pegged for the role, and he oh. broke his arm. Oh. It was terrible. He felt awful. I went to see him at his house and we talked about the movie and, and what his, his condition meant to the actual story. Um, and it was going to be that, but then he broke his arm. And so uh, Zach's name came up and we talked on the phone. He wanted to do it. Martin Donovan, I've worked with yeah. him before. He's a yeah. Vancouver guy now. Adam Beach is in my last film, my previous film, yeah. um, Juanita with, uh, with Alfie Woodard. Right. He's the right. love interest in that. So uh, pretty much everybody... Uh, I had a connection with Peter Stebbings, of course, I've worked with a lot. Yeah. So these are all people that I've worked with. And you trust. Except for, except for Roberta and Zach, really. Yeah. But it worked. It just really worked. worked. Everybody jived so well together. And I, I wanted to ask you, I said, did you get down and dirty? Did you learn how to farm a little bit? I'm going to tell you that was, I, I didn't know anything about farming at all, even though I'm not, I'm one generation removed from, on both sides. My mom's from South Dakota on a farm. My father's, uh, my grandfather is Maryland farmer. Yeah. And but I, yeah, I can't grow a house plant. I can't grow a, a turnip. But uh, so it was, it was uh, really great to learn all the stuff that I learned. And and we, any story that I tell, I want to make sure that, even back to Night Heat, for instance. You know, yeah. if if a real cop stopped me on the street, and said, "Hey, I saw you on that Night Heat show. You really nailed the the cop life down." I said, "Oh, thanks." Yeah. Yeah, because one time I was eating a meatball sub at two in the morning, and I got heartburn just like you. I mean, that's the root of it. I, you know, that's yeah. you want to you want to get the farmer to. Uh, I mean, we had a we had corn in the in the one sheet, the poster for a second there because it looked great, and and I went, wait, wait a minute. Our first AD pointed out says that's corn. It's not going to. Yeah. Oh yeah, in fact, all the presses. So you know, I wanted to make sure that we told the story accurately, and yeah. we filmed the stuff in season. And the farm is a character on the story, a very Absolutely. important character in the movie. So yeah, 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 it's just so well done. It's such a great story, and I really do hope people see it because, 
a lot can be learned, you know, sticking to your guns is so important, yeah, I think. It's universal. Yeah. And, and I, and we, you know, we've got a release up there with Mongrel. They're my, my pals and they're championing this film. And we're, we're, we're going to screens across Canada. You know, we're, we're waiting yeah. to see, fingers crossed, uh, who's closing, Montreal's closed. And, you know, we're, we're waiting to see if, if people can get, get to their local cinema, but uh, I'm hopeful. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. You know, look, worst case scenario, we will get it on video on demand or something. Mm -hmm. It's got to get out there. I think you'll be back at the Genies with Christopher Walken. You know, it's all going to turn around for you, Clark. There you go. That'll be hilarious. And you still won't remember me. Oh, please. <laughs> okay, a couple, couple more questions and then I'm going to let you go. But okay. I have to ask you, I mean, look, I, I, I love watching. Your directing is, is superb. You're such a great director. But I always love seeing you on camera as well. It was so much fun to see you and Tammy Always Dying just recently, Amy Jo Johnson right. film. That was right. fun to right. see you. And with the pandemic, you know, people are revisiting old shows um, the Wire, of course, one of them. And mm -hmm. I, you know, that, that, you know, you working on that show, whether directing, acting, just still stands out as one of the top level shows of all time. Yeah, what, what did that show do for you? How did it change your life? Well, it starts before that. It started on Homicide. Uh, you yeah. know, for, of course, Sonny Grasso invented me uh, for Night Heat. Mm -hmm. I was a driver on, on that show. And he said, hey, kid, you an actor? I said, yeah. And then boom, I did uh, like 16 episodes of it. But, um, that kind of led me to um, coming back to the States and, and, and being on Homicide, which David Simon wrote the book, which led to The Wire. So uh, the, those things all sort of connected. And, and uh, that's why me and Simon connected because we, we had shorthand together from, from back in the Homicide days for The Wire. Yeah, is there any show that's on the air right now that you would love to direct? Like, have you been watching Lovecraft Country? I have not. I, I'm I'm one of the, the I, I'm the one that watches old stuff. Ah. Like I I'm watching movies that I haven't seen for years. You know I I'm uh, uh I'm trying to think of some names. Of course I can't remember. Um, Orthodox uh, that series that uh, it was phenomenal. I unorthodox. I, yeah. 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 Un unorthodox. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. Oh wow. And and there's things like that that I'm I'm connecting to. But mostly I'm watching films like. Uh, you know, that I haven't seen forever. Like, yeah. Well, you got the, yeah, we had the time to catch up on things like yeah. that. It's, but it's, I, it's and fantastic. And I keep saying I'm going to binge on something current, but um, I've never seen The Sopranos. Get out of town! Oh, no, terrible. I'm not, I, I just really don't, I don't watch a lot of current stuff. Interesting, interesting, because there is a lot. Current. I didn't watch it when it was on, but I'm now be my chance to catch up. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much stuff out there, but I, I would like, because I, I, I mentioned Lovecraft Country because it's, it's just- I heard it's, my daughter's a big it, I, I'm so obsessed that I cannot wait until it's, I, it, I'm so used to binging stuff now that it drives me crazy that I've got to wait every Sunday. It's brilliant. And Helen Shaver actually uh, did one of, the, one of the episodes too, which I thought, wow, when I saw her name as a director, oh, wow. um, she pops up a, a whole lot too. But I thought, I thought of you, I was watching it, I go, holy mackerel, if this goes into another season, you really need to lobby to direct an episode of that because- I think they might've asked. I don't think I could. I think they asked. I, I, I can't quite remember, but- well, get back on the phone, because if there's season two, I'm telling you, I, I'm going to give you props for that. Well, uh, listen, it's always a pleasure to have a chance to talk to you. Uh, best of luck with Percy. It's such a great, great story, and I'm so happy that you were able to tell it. And uh, just just keep them coming. Keep them coming. Yeah, I'm happy to get it out there. You know, I'm happy that people are going to get a chance to see it. Yeah. I'd love to take it to India. I'd love for them to see it, too. You yeah, know? I was going to ask, because that was a very important part of the whole story, yeah. too. And you got to shoot there as well. Oh, yeah. Like, that was a Hail Mary. Uh, we, we shot a lot in Winnipeg, uh, anticipating not being able to find the money to go to India, but we did. Yeah. Uh, Dan Beckerman is a magician at gathering dough. Right. And, uh, but we shot with the idea in mind that we could, India is going to never leave the University of Winnipeg campus. <laughs> well, you know, and Percy was, a, was very important over there, as, as I understand Chris Walken was too. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, he, he couldn't go anywhere. I mean, I get it, you know, he couldn't go anywhere. People, yeah. we, had to, we had to sneak up on people um, as we filmed. So they wouldn't also, they wouldn't be going, wait, where do I know that guy? Oh, yeah. it's, you know, we, yeah. we had to get it quick. Amazing, amazing. Well, yeah. thank you so much again for your time. I know there's other people <laughs> want to speak to you, but uh, always a pleasure. And uh, I hope we get to see you back in Toronto sometime soon. Who knows, right? Well, I'll be back soon enough. I mean, my sister's staying at my place in, in Toronto. Okay, great. Which is great because 
it's you know that's yeah. she's then and everything about but eventually we're going to get this thing solved and we'll be able to get back on with our lives in some sense we will we will thank you so much okay have a great rest of your day and uh, thank you for your time today clark i appreciate it okay bye-bye okay, bye-bye